Hey guys, it's Jake and Angel here. And we're here today to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly of owning a business. First, we're gonna go over the good. Independence and control are by far one of the most rewarding things about owning a business. You don't have a boss that's lurking over you. You have free will to create what you want, you know, in, in your business. You're your own boss. You get to shape the company that you're creating in the direction you want it to go. And if you're a very creative person, it's really awesome because you get to create your own success. You get to dictate what you do and what you don't do. There can also be financial potential with owning a business. As the owner, then you can take all of the profits from your business and you can write them off if you want when it comes to tax time. You can have your business pay for your daily needs and things that you do, as long as you can say that you needed them for your business. So say for instance, you wanted to take a trip to Disney World. As long as you had a conference with somebody relating to the business there at Disney World, then you can write the whole trip off. Consult with your tax professional for all of the nitty gritty details regarding writing things off. Running your own business also has a lot of personal fulfillment. You're able to pursue your passions and use your skills that you have, and you're able to make a positive impact on the world in your community your customers, your employees you have. When it comes down to personal fulfillment, we really care about the world and the way that we live. And you know, we're vegetarians as well. And we um, care about being eco-friendly. And so we made a cleaning business using only eco-friendly products. And so that was just one really cool way that we were able to give back to the community is by not cleaning with these harsh products bleach and other things that not only kill the person inside the house and we just clean for it but they kill yourself and your cleaners as well and so we used eco-friendly plant-derived products which was a huge personal fulfillment for us just to be able to say that we're doing that and providing that to the world was just a really big and impactful thing that we could do it made us care about what we were doing a lot more so personal fulfillment is always a huge benefit of doing your own thing. If you have a, a job at McDonald's, but you don't like food, there's no personal fulfillment there. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna enjoy your life. So always think of that. Now with everything, there's always the bad. Dun, dun, dun. So let's go over the bad. Now with any business venture, there's gonna be risk financially. With our cleaning business, we didn't invest thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars at the beginning. We, I think we maybe invested $1,500 in mm -hmm. total for everything, but you could do it for cheaper. We, when we start our businesses, we go all out. So, and we had a little bit of capital to spend 1500 bucks, it's not that much, but most people have that in their bank account. So this is a, cleaning business is a great business to start if you have no capital, so that's why we, we did it. And you know, $1,500 on a credit card is pretty easy to get. But with any business, there is financial risk and you could lose it all. So you have to be careful with how you do it. You have to plan the right way strategically and make sure you're paying attention because you might blow $1,500 and not market yourself right or not do the jobs good, don't know how to clean or don't know how to do your business and you fail. So there's always that risk of you know putting in, investing money in and then losing it all. So be cautious of that. Being a business owner, you're gonna have some long hours and some hard work, especially in the beginning. Jake and I were literally doing everything, the cleaning, the invoicing, the sales, um, pleasing the customer, follow up, literally everything. And it was a lot of stuff to do and it got very tiring and you might want to quit <laughs> so luckily we had each other though yeah exactly and that's why you start delegating tasks so you don't have to do everything once you start building your business up you can start taking some of that workload off of you and spreading it out to other people so you can focus on growing your business and not being in your business working mm -hmm. and you don't have to juggle multiple things at one time 
this person is strictly for this and this person is for this and that's that's how a business runs efficiently but there were times when we were up until 1 a.m cleaning houses because we had a last minute call and we needed the money and we were like yeah we're there we're there for you we always we were pretty much yes men <laughs> whenever we could we would always take the job and we would just say yes to everything i don't know if that's great advice because sometimes you can get a little bit off track but that's what we did in the beginning we were always available and we always said yes to everybody except for if they didn't want to hit our price then we were like okay well we're not going to be there right now right right when you need us for a low price we're not going to do that we would always tack on an emergency fee or a last minute notice something like that and so we could get an extra fifty dollars you know if we did the job or however however much we wanted to add on there there were also nights when jake and i were inside of our office until 3 a.m <laughs> Yeah. putting together a brand new linen system for all of our short short-term rentals mm -hmm. and we literally were just bagging linens until 3 a.m queens with the fly sheets and the fitted sheets and the two pillowcases and bag it up and throw it over there and, da -da 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 -da. and we were doing that all night until 3 a.m sorting them out and making a brand new beautiful station for all the linen bags and all the linens and the towels and the hand towels and the washcloth and all the things and so you're going to be doing so much stuff as a business owner. That is definitely one of the bad. It's um, a lot more than most jobs, especially if you don't have any partners and you're doing it all yourself at the beginning. It's, it gets overwhelming and it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, some people, that's why a lot of businesses fail is because it's a lot of work. You have to spend countless, you're going to work more than 40 hours if you want a successful business. That's just how it is. You're, most most weeks you're gonna work more than 60 hours as an individual building it. And you know, you gotta consider that. Some businesses, you, you know, you could work 20 hours and it could be successful, but it just really depends on how, what business you're in, how you structure it. But um, hard work, long hours. Hard work pays off. It does pay off. Yes. At but first, be smart, be smart too. Yeah. Smart work pays off a lot more than hard work. But you gotta put in hard work. You have to put in the sweat equity. Yes. If you don't have money to start off by hiring people, you have to put in the sweat equity. You have to do the jobs. You have to do the long hours until you're able to wean yourself from there. It's like a baby. Yes. You know, at first you're gonna be doing all the stuff and then you're gonna be able to delegate and get out of there. I saw this meme and it was a dog and he was walking himself with his leash in his mouth. And that's kind of like what it's like being a business owner. You just have to make sure that you're on task, you're doing your job because you're the only one building this business if you're by yourself. So you just need to make sure that you stay on task and get, get the stuff done because nobody else is in charge of your life. You're the only one who's gonna make yourself success. You have to be your own boss. You have to tell yourself what to do and some people don't have the power to do that. And so if you don't have it, you don't have it. But if you do, you do and you can learn. Another thing about, you know, owning a business that's bad is the uncertainty and the stress. And as everybody knows with COVID happening just a couple of years ago, there's a lot of uncertainty in this world. Things can pop up at any minute and a business can fail. A successful business over the past five years can instantly fail because of how the markets are. You know, that's one thing that you have to really pay attention to the world and always adapt and adjust so your business will not fail. Uh, stress is another huge factor with owning a business because everything, especially starting out, everything's piled on to you. If you don't have money to delegate, money to hire or partners, then everything's on you and that's a lot of stress. So you got to manage and have goals and just plan accordingly and make sure you're on task with everything. So the stress is not as you know impactful as what could be with our business we managed at the time of selling we managed about 70 short-term rentals that's stressful even though we delegated a lot of them you know we had 20 plus 23 employees we delegated a lot but it's still stressful because hey if three people call out guess what that's going to be rough that's going to be a rough day because we have so many properties to clean three people called out and they're supposed to clean like two houses each yeah you have all those houses now to figure out who's going to clean them by four o'clock check-in. Yeah. So 
it adds up. So yeah. yeah, you always want to plan for that. You know, we had backup cleaners. We'd, we'd be able to call people and, you know, hey, I need you today on call. You know, if you had a job, you might've been on call before. Create those things in your systems. That's the cool thing about being a business owner. You can create these things that your other jobs you wish you had. You now have the power to create those, which is why we started our own businesses seven, eight years ago, because we were in a part of other people's businesses and they, it wasn't that good. You know, there's things that I wish were different. So that's why we started our landscaping company, our first business we started eight, eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you We should have sold fail. that thing. Yeah. No, we should have sold it. It was a success. We were making thousands of dollars a month. Yeah. And we just didn't know about selling. We had one employee and um, <laughs> we were doing a lot of the work. It was hard work. Mm -hmm. We had a whole landscape truck, trailer, and a bunch of other stuff. But that's a whole nother story we'll talk about later. I gotta say, I was ripped. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was pruning these bushes and like, I was starting to get some muscles there. But yeah, anyways, that's hard work. Like the people who are out there in the heat, in the sun, doing this hard work landscaping, props to you. So we've talked about the good, the bad, and here comes the ugly of owning a business. <laughs> So there's a lot of legal and regulatory obligations that you have to have when owning a business. You have to have licenses and permits and insurance. And so make sure that you're doing everything by the book. You always want to start off being legal. So figure out what type of insurance your company needs to have. Make sure that you have registered your business as an EIN and that you know you have insurance and workers comp and you're getting all the correct licenses and permits that you need for your city and state and county. We actually started our company in Port Royal, South Carolina and we did business in Port Royal, Beaufort. And so we actually needed a lot of different types of permits to be able to do business in those areas. So we needed a business permit for the town of Port Royal. We needed a license and permit for the city of Beaufort and then also the town of Beaufort. So it was just crazy because some of these addresses, I'm like, dude, they're in both the city of Beaufort and the, and the county of Beaufort, but we had to get a license and permit for both of those. So it's probably just a way for the state to make money, but you know, that's okay. We all got to make our money. So we always followed everything by the rules, by the books, so we couldn't get in trouble. That also comes down to making sure that when you have employees, you've properly given them their three write-ups or however many times you wanna write them up before they're fired and just make sure you document everything. Document every day that they're tardy. Document every day that they have an absence. Document literally everything, anything that they've done wrong in case you ever need to terminate their employment. Just make sure that you've literally written down as many things as you can. We've had like three people try to get unemployment from us and I've had to respond back to these unemployment claims and just say they were, you know, rightfully terminated because of these instances. Literally somebody quit. They literally <laughs> quit working for us and then they tried to collect unemployment from us. So I'm like, hello state of South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to let you know that I have a screenshot here of when this employee quit and she does not get approved for unemployment because she quit. <laughs> so make sure that you have everything properly notated, crossed all your T's and dotted your I's when it comes to business. You want to make sure that everything's legal. Go and talk with a professional in your area about any kinds of questions that you have. We actually went to SCORE Business Mentorship in the very beginning and they helped us out with figuring out all of the things that we needed to start with. And SCORE is just a company that helps people start businesses and they're nationwide. And if you have assets or just want super protection, your entity matters, um, you can do sole proprietorship, you can do all these other ones, but at the end of the day, an LLC is the your best friend. It's a pass-through entity, but there's, there's a lot of protection, meaning people can't come after you your personal assets so if you own a house and somebody sues your business you're not gonna get your house taken away so just do more research talk to professionals about it and figure out what's right for you in your personal situation make sure everything's legal though so you're not so you don't turn this good the bad the ugly into a real ugly situation for you <laughs> <laughs> all right another ugly which can be very ugly is dealing with employee management there's 
the hiring process, the terminating process. You have to manage them, dealing with that. Uh, it can be all demanding, you know, especially when you start getting 10 to 20 employees. There's a bunch of different types of personalities you have to, you know, entertain. People have needs. As an employee, you're gonna have needs. Days off, you're gonna be sick days. You're gonna have all these different things. So understanding how to talk to employees is something huge that you, it's, it's a skill you need to learn over time. At the beginning, hiring employees, that's a skill, you know. We've had countless people that we hired and they just weren't a good fit, you know. But we, you, have to, you have to go through those failures and learn from them so the next person you hire can be better. Learning from the start, just looking at the application, you can tell a lot by somebody if it's like a blank application that says, I need a job, probably not a good fit. <laughs> but if it's this long application that says all their good stuff, they, you know, either they want to college or whatever, it doesn't really matter if they want to college, but if they have the details there and they care, that's important. After you hire them, you have to train them. Training can be overwhelming because you could go two weeks with training this person and then they quit. And then it's just like, oh, no, I have to redo the whole thing. And um, so that's a whole nother step. So getting a good training plan is and having somebody delegating that to somebody else is really important, which I recommend doing it right away. So you're not really worrying about that aspect of it. And then you have payroll, which is a whole nother step, whether you're doing 1099, um, whether you're doing pay rates, whether you're doing an actual employee where you pay for partial taxes on a W-2, you have to pay, you have to deal with payroll. That's, you, you might have a payroll system, you might do it in-house, you might use QuickBooks, whatever it is, uh, you have to, that's another stress that you have to pay attention to and it takes a lot of time to learn. It's a skill, payroll is a skill, it takes a lot of numbers and dealing with the clocking in and clocking out, making sure people are actually doing it right and they're not time stealing from you clocking in and driving uh, to McDonald's and spending their first hour on the clock eating breakfast and then driving to the job we've had that happen so just dealing with all that it can be very ugly so pay attention to what you know your employees are doing make sure you're hiring the correct employees that fit your culture that you want your customers to see because your employees are a representation of you so it matters about who you hire. So when you train people, you want to train them up to be leaders. And you want them to, when they go out and they go to a job with somebody, whether it's cleaning or whatever it is, I had one employee, brand new, and she came back. They went out with a team for the first time and said, hey, how did everything go? And she said, well, my side was good. Mm. I said, oh, wait. Your side was good. I said, well, what about at the rest of the house? How did everything else go? And then I said, that's not how we do things here. We're a family. And if you notice that something is not top clean team approved, then you need to fix it. And you need to teach the person because obviously they don't know. And you can't just be like, well, I'm done. My side's good. I, I got an A, but you know, that side, you cannot do that. Like everything it's teamwork and you need to be a leader and say hey i noticed that you missed that window here let me show you how to properly clean a window like this and then you know this is how how we do it here and so oh i noticed that you made that bed wrong let me show you how we do it here be a leader and um make sure that things are getting done so that you can get promoted or just to show that you care about what you're doing we live this life to be able to put our stamp on the world and you want your stamp to be a good a good one mm -hmm. you want to leave a long lasting wow factor you know in the work that you're providing and so that's what we try to do when we train our employees we try to teach a really good culture of family and leadership and we all work together we all thrive together and we succeed together and throw in incentives so they can get pay increases or bonuses. If they get a review, then we'll give them $25, things like that. You really need to act like you're a family when you have employees. Make sure that they're getting some value from working for you or else they won't continue to work for you and they'll just work for somebody else. We're all humans, so we all go through things at home, but try to have your employees try their best not to bring it into the work environment. Always leave the stuff at home. And if you notice that somebody's looking a little bit down, they're not being themselves, talking in the meetings, then definitely pull them aside and say, hey, 
I noticed that you looked a little bit sad, you know, what's going on? And always try to comfort them and talk to them because you're also HR. You're the HR department, you're the boss, you're the manager, you're the everything. So make sure that your gear is working and so that everything else can flow. Employees, they've got feelings, they've got needs, the business has needs, make sure that everything's going smoothly. That's part of the ugly of running a business with employees. There is a lot of responsibility and pressure being a business owner. So you have a lot of things that are weighing down on your shoulders from making sure that the business is profitable, from making sure that you have enough houses to give your employees for the week, that they're actually making enough to live their lives and to make enough money for their, their children and making sure that you're following all the rules in your state and you're making sure all the little things you're getting enough cleaning equipment, you're getting enough supplies, your customers are happy. There's so many little things to running a business and all of this is just on your shoulders. I'm lucky enough to have a partner in this and I think it's really great to start a business with your spouse because you two should be on the same flow. Same wavelength. Yeah. And so we learn everything together, we follow through with everything together, we're always just going together because when you learn all these things, and the other person doesn't know those things, you can start to grow apart. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and, and ever since I was in the military, whenever I left the military, that's a huge reason why I left the military is because we didn't we didn't spend enough time together. Leaving the military and then getting a job, it was like the same thing almost. Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be away for so much. And, you know, we weren't growing and we just, there was nothing, our life was boring. <laughs> Working together and really understanding each other and it's it makes a fun life mm -hmm. honestly it makes life a fun life and you get to work together and it's not for everybody some people just can't work together but we got lucky and we're able to do it yeah we've had a lot of success with it and you have to train yourselves too yeah. like if if it doesn't come naturally to you well then you have to train yourselves on how to do it we've read so many books about partnerships and doing what he's good at and I do what I'm good at and then they can you know intermingle and so he's a visionary and I'm an integrator so he works on where the future of the business can go and I work on the scheduling and the this and now and so those two things they mesh and either way you're going to need another person to do those things if you're not good at it so it was perfect that we were able to mesh. <laughs> 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 We're good at meshing. Yeah. So find a partner, grow the business quicker if you can. If not, you can do it on your own. Just find the resources and you'll be able to do anything that you want to do. Stay on track, focus on your goals, and keep going at it. Learn how to delegate. If you learn how to delegate and you're good at it, then you'll be you'll thrive in, in the business world because if you can be late, you can be super lazy and just delegate all the tasks and boom, you can, you can blow up and be super financially successful and have a successful business. So if that's one thing you take from this video, it's that in my eyes, is learn how to delegate and you'll be successful. So that was the good, the bad, and the ugly with owning and running a business, specifically a cleaning business, but any business, it's basically all of that stuff. As you grow, you'll have employees and boom, the good, the bad, the ugly. And it never stops. It never stops until, until you, you sell, sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so when, whenever you start your business plan with the end goal of selling it, so you know you can get out of it eventually. Unless, and even if you don't, just plan on it. Make that the end goal because that's a, in our eyes, we, we, we sold the business, it was a success. If we just got tired of it and, you know, just quit, we, that would have been a failure. No matter how much profit and revenue we made every month, if we just quit and gave up, it would have been like, you know, that's a that's another L and we don't want Ls, we want Ws. We want lessons that turn into wins. Just plan on the sell even if you don't want to sell. It'll just be another thing that might be there uh, in the future when you do want to sell. So you're able to automate your business and you don't have to do everything. It's all working as it should be and then you can sell it if you'd like or you can keep it if you don't because you're not even in it. Anyways. Exactly. So. All right guys, well thank you so much for watching. If you want specific videos, let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave some comments. Welcome to the family if this is your first video watching. All right guys, till next time. See you guys later. Bye.